Welcome. We're going to begin today with a special interview with the governor, Mike Pence, the Republican nominee for vice president. He's with us on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania. Governor, you know, uh, some years ago, Paul Laxalt, who was campaign manager for Ronald Reagan, told me that the press was so scurrilous about Reagan that he, Laxalt, did not even want to let him see the papers. What have you guys doing to set the left on fire? I mean, there's this vitriol coming at Donald Trump that's unprecedented. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Pat, it's been amazing. It's good to be with you today, by Thanks. the way. Um, it's been amazing since I joined this ticket. It's, for, it's, it's virtually been two on one every day with the national media doing half of Hillary Clinton's work for her. But the remarkable thing is that, that Donald Trump is winning hearts and minds every day, and that's because he's focusing on the issues the American people are focused on, and that is restoring a stronger America in the world, rebuilding our military, uh, confronting radical Islamic terrorism, uh, and at home, restoring law and order to our streets, getting this economy moving again, not through the tax increases and, and increased regulation and more government that Hillary Clinton advocates, but through less taxes, less regulation, repealing Obamacare, ending the war on coal, all the things that we know have revived our economy in the past and will revive it again. That along with the, the, the enormous importance of the Supreme Court of the United States, I, I truly do believe that that the, the message that Donald Trump is delivering across this country to make America great again is breaking through, even, the, even through the overwhelming bias of the national press. You know, they will not talk about issues. You just went through a litany of important issues that are on people's minds, and all they want to talk about is 11-year-old sex tape. What is it with these guys? Well, it's, it, it really is amazing. And let me, let me be clear, I, I was... Uh, I was pleased that Donald Trump uh, uh, this last weekend on several occasions uh, spoke up with humility and, and apologized for those remarks 11 years ago. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that he also in that presidential debate refocused on the issues of enormous importance to the American people. Look, Pat, I, I accepted the opportunity to run for vice president because I think this country's in a lot of trouble. I mean, seven and a half years of Barack Obama and, and Hillary Clinton's brand of leadership has literally weakened America's place in the world. It's emboldened the enemies of this country around the globe. It's stifled the American economy. And, and it set us on a pathway of walking away from some of our most cherished, God-given liberties. And, and I promise you, I'm just going to fight every day for the next 26 days here in Pennsylvania and, and, and yesterday in Virginia and all across this country to carry Donald Trump's message to make America great again to every corner of the land. You know, I founded the American Center for Law and Justice. We fight in the Supreme Court. We've had a number of victories, but right now our people don't dare to go to the court because they know they'll get a decision against them. A five to four court uh, could just kill religious liberty. And it would. I understand that Merrick Garland uh, was for the whole idea of the Second Amendment dealing only with militias, which means they would disarm the population. It's a very, very serious thing you guys are dealing with. It's absolutely right, Pat. And, you know, I tell people, and, you know, I said this in Raleigh, North Carolina last night, that as important as national security is, and we've got to be stronger in the world, as important as law and order is, as important as getting this economy moving again is, maybe the most important issue on the ballot is the fact that the next president of the United States will probably set the course and direction of the Supreme Court for the next 40 years. Uh, and, and it's on all of those issues that are enshrined in the Bill of Rights. You heard Hillary Clinton in that presidential debate when she was asked about appointments to the court. It was a checklist of things she wanted the court to do and continue to do. That's called legislating from the bench. In Donald Trump, you can look at the list of, of some 20 men and women, conservative jurists that he'll be drawing from to fill not only the vacancy left by the late and great Justice Antonin Scalia, but as we go forward. Uh, Donald Trump and I will be making appointments to the federal courts at every level from the Supreme Court down that will strictly interpret the Constitution of the United States, that will stand by our God-given liberties, uh, our, our liberties enshrined in the First Amendment, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the, and, and stand by our Second Amendment. It's so important to point out Hillary Clinton actually said that that one five to four decision, the Heller decision about the Second Amendment was wrongly decided. That was decided by one vote. Literally, all that decision said was that the right to keep and bear arms in the Constitution was an individual right. And Hillary Clinton thought 
that that was wrong. So all of these issues are liberties, the decisions of the Supreme Court, the role it plays in our lives. It's of enormous importance, and, and everyone within the sound of my voice should know that 26 days from now, we must ensure that the next president making appointments to the Supreme Court of the United States will be President Donald Trump. Uh, some years ago, I encountered the anti-Christian bigotry in the Washington Post. It was palpable. Uh, people who uh, supported me, and there were hundreds of thousands who were poor, uneducated, and easy to command. I understand that these WikiLeaks uh, things uh, have discussed, uh, uh, the Hillary's people have been discussing anti-Catholic bigotry of an alarming uh, uh, extent. Well, what do, you, what do you know about that? Well, it's, it's all part of an avalanche coming out of, uh, of, of the years of the Clinton Foundation and making their way to the Internet. But I have to tell you, as, 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 a, as a fellow believer, I was deeply troubled uh, that Hillary Clinton's communications director mm -hmm. in an email made anti-Catholic and anti-Christian remarks. She actually referred to evangelicals as being, as, as uh, uh, not socially acceptable. She said that to be Catholic was more socially acceptable than to be evangelical, but there were also demeaning comments about the Catholic faith. You know, we, we, we simply, you, you've seen it over the course of your career, yeah. uh, these elitists in Washington, D.C., and the condescending attitudes they have about faith. I mean, it, Hillary Clinton should denounce those comments immediately and call on her communications director to apologize to Catholics and evangelical Christians across America and do it immediately. You know, there was a uh, subpoena from the uh, Congressional Committee uh, about certain uh, emails, about certain uh, documents, and also certain uh, uh, well pieces of equipment. And uh, the, under that subpoena, uh, the Justice Department or the FBI instructed those people to destroy actually the evidence that was requested by a congressional committee. That to me is just absolutely appalling. I mean, why, why hasn't there been a great outcry about that? Well, it, it just, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And frankly, these wiki, these wiki leaks, uh, uh, releases of emails is starting to call into high relief exactly why after it was discovered that she had a private server, that while she was Secretary of State, she operated a, the Clinton Foundation that accepted tens of millions of dollars from foreign governments and foreign donors. But after it was discovered she had a private server, when Congress made a request for the emails, she used high technology and actually hammers to destroy access to and the availability of those emails. But even just this week uh, on ABC News, it was, it was uncovered that while she was Secretary of State, there's an email now, hard evidence, that shows that they, her State Department was actually directing contracts for the Haitian relief effort following the 2010 earthquake to friends of the Clintons. I mean, this is exactly the kind of pay-to-play politics that Hillary Clinton said never happened. She said no decision at the State, if you remember in the first debate, yeah. no decision at the State Department was ever impacted by donations to the Clinton Foundation. Well, now we're holding an email where a senior official, senior aide to Secretary Clinton was, was directing contracts for the rebuilding of Haiti in that, in the, in the period after the earthquake to friends of the Clintons. This, this is just... This is the kind of politics, the kind of pay-to-play politics and cronyism the American people are sick and tired of. And, Pat, it's the, it's the kind of pay-to-play politics that's going to end the day that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. Well, you're a great governor of Indiana, and you're a credit to our nation. We thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Pat. Good to be with you. Well, Ephraim Graham has more of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom, and here's Ephraim. Pat, on the campaign trail, Donald Trump is hitting back hard against alleged reports he sexually assaulted women. And on the Democratic side, more questions for Hillary Clinton over her email controversy. Charlene Aaron has this story. GOP nominee Donald Trump says he doesn't know and has never met some of the women accusing him of sexual assault, calling the claims of inappropriate conduct absolutely false and attacking his accusers. These people are horrible people. They're horrible, horrible liars. Several women have come forward in a series of reports claiming that Trump groped or kissed them without their consent, 
and made unwanted advances. D did he actually kiss you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the, the face or on the lips? All, wherever he could find a landing spot, yes. Trump says the claims are all part of a coordinated vicious attack from the media and rival Hillary Clinton's campaign. The most powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media, the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda. And the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. At a rally Thursday, Trump says he has evidence to disprove allegations of sexual assault and will release it at the appropriate time. Though she's leading in the polls, Clinton sat down with talk show host Ellen DeGeneres to say the race hasn't ended yet. I don't want anybody to think this election's over. We've got to work really hard uh, for the next uh, three and a half weeks because who knows? Her appearance came as the Democratic nominee faces continued fallout from her email controversy. Clinton said under oath in a court filing Thursday that she can't recall key details about her use of a private email server posed by the watchdog legal group Judicial Watch. A lawyer for Clinton provided her sworn answers in writing to questions submitted by Judicial Watch. The group has filed multiple lawsuits seeking copies of government documents from Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State. The Clinton campaign is also still dealing with fallout from the ongoing WikiLeaks releases of her campaign's hacked emails. And WikiLeaks plans to release tens of thousands more of those emails before Election Day. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Two more people have died in North Carolina in the wake of Hurricane Matthew, raising the death toll in the state to 22. North Carolina is still seeing flooding several days after Matthew dumped more than a foot of rain. Operation Blessing has been busy helping people in Fayetteville, North Carolina, after the storm tore through their neighborhoods. The Operation Blessings team has been providing hot meals, distributing water, and cleaning out homes. Tyrannus George's house flooded, destroying everything he owned, but with the help of Operation Blessing, his family now has some comfort. My main concern was that my family was, was safe. I mean, um, you can get another house, but you can't get another life. I thank God for Operation uh, Blessing because, you know, it shows us that you guys are, are concerned about us. And at the same time, you know, it's an example of us helping one another. Me personally, I thank God for you guys. Operation Blessing is still accepting volunteers. You can visit the website at ob.org to see exactly how you can help them out. The son of evangelist Billy Graham is on a mission to wake up the church and get them to vote. The Decision America tour, he has held prayer rallies in all 50 states. Mark Martin caught up with Graham at the last stop on the tour, Richmond, Virginia. The only hope for this country is God. On the grounds of the Virginia State House, Franklin Graham led thousands of people in a time of Bible reading and prayer. As God brings to your thought, to your mind, the sins that this nation has committed, let's confess these sins out loud to God right here on the steps of your Capitol. It was also a time to rally voters. I want the church to wake up. The church has to vote. America needs to hear the voice of God's people. Graham says this is the most important election in his life, and he told the crowd the election is all about the Supreme Court. And during the next four years, there could be two, three, possibly up to five justices could be appointed. That's huge, and, uh, and it's, it'll change the direction of our country. If the wrong justices, uh, progressive justices, are, are appointed, uh, it's finished for this nation. CBN News caught up with Graham on a Decision America tour bus. He said he does not want to tell people how to vote, but he does want them to head to the but, polls. Uh, if, if we sit at home, 20 to 30 million sit at home, uh, our country is finished. 
but if the church will wake up and if the church will vote, and again, you're not voting for a person's personality. We're voting about uh, putting a person in the White House that will appoint the right justices. And that's what this election is about. That message struck a chord with those at the rally. I know the two candidates aren't the best choices on either side, but regardless, you have an obligation as an American to vote and be prayerful about it. And don't just think about the personalities, but think about what's at stake. The Supreme Court yep. is at stake here. Our way of life, in a matter of speaking, is at stake. So prayerfully decide and vote. Mark Martin, CBN News, Richmond, Virginia. Those are today's top stories from CBN News.